We don't know who's made the rosters let's yet. We can't predict injuries. Of course, let's do this. Let's go. Lead block, let's do this. Okay, here's what we have to tell you. The schedule was released. We chewed on it. We spat it out from every angle. We're looking forward to week four. Of course, Brady's return to Foxytown to take on Bill Belichick and the Patriots. Huge game. It might be the most anticipated regular season game, but not many are ready to call it a Super Bowl preview. Take that, Patriots. But if you look across the entire 21 schedule, take a look at these. These are just a few AFC versus NFC games that might fit the bill of that Super Bowl preview game. So whether it's these guys or any of the interconference games this season, Shriggs, I ask you, what is the one matchup on the schedule that looks like it could be a Super Bowl 56 preview? All right, it's May 17th, May 18th. I don't even know the date, Kay. Um, it is. All I know is we've been talking about karaoke and Jane. Jane Slater said she was in choir for about 37 years. I would love to know, Jane, more about your <laughs> choir career. Maybe we can get into that tomorrow. It wasn't just a cup of coffee with choir. You you spent decades doing no, choir. Okay, like a I want to hear it. I was an alto, okay? It's perfect. It sounds like a segment. An alto. <laughs> an alto. I think you should sing this segment as we talk about our Super Bowl picks in May. Um, I, I, I think the Chiefs are the best team in the AFC, but I look at the NFC, and I don't think the Packers, I know what I'm getting, and that's their big interconference rival uh, with, the, with the two different conferences this year. So I'm going to go with two teams that I'm not necessarily are looked at as the favorites in their conference, but are right up there. I love that Rams at Ravens game, week 17. I mentioned it last week on the show. I find this one to be fascinating, not only because of the two teams and fan bases and everything that goes into it, but that it's in week 17 and that we're going to know what these teams are. You're talking about Super Bowl preview. How's this thing going to play out? What we see weeks one through eight, those teams aren't the same as the ones we see in the second half. And then, of course, when we get to January, Stafford in the Super Bowl? Is that what you're saying at home? Are you serious? Lamar Jackson winning multiple big games late to get to the Super Bowl? Yeah, why not? We're in May. We're talking Super Bowl preview and we're talking about this game. Stafford, to me, yeah, is fascinating. Imagine the Rams, okay, who could play on the road and can do it all and went to Seattle and Green Bay last year and competed really hard with Jared Goff, having one of the greatest cannons in NFL history now in those cold weather games going into Baltimore week 17. I think the Rams and Ravens are both going to be special teams. And when you talk about when this game is played, week 17, I kind of get the feeling that those games late in December and then in early January will let us know what we're going to get in February. Sean O'Hara played in a Week 17 Patriots versus Giants game on New Year's Eve weekend when everyone knew that this game kind of felt special. Giants went on their run. Patriots, of course, finished the job in the regular season, and then the Giants got the best of them. I love the Week 17 placement. Rams at Ravens. Stafford throwing bombs in late, late, late season games. Let's go. Gonna be chilly. It's gonna be cold. <laughs> well, I think I'm gonna have to go. Like I'm looking at the Bills and uh, the Bucks. I mean, I think all of us can look at this Bucks roster. They haven't made any changes really to it. Uh, if anything, they've just had additions with with the draft. But then I look at the Bills, Bills and Bucks, and I just see the Bills just slowly going up on the incline. That improved accuracy from Josh Allen last season led to the number two offense in the league. And then, of course, the one thing I think that's been holding this team back is the defense. And let's be honest, the Kansas City Chiefs. In order to get past the Kansas City Chiefs, you've got to get past Patrick Mahomes. In order to do that, you need some good pass rushers. So in the draft this year, they addressed that with their first two picks going to the pass rush. So if they can improve upon that, I think they've got all of the weapons on offense. And that would be a real fun game. Last year, we saw, of course, Brady and Patrick Mahomes. Let's see one of the other young, bright quarterbacks in this game, Josh Allen, go against the big guy. Well, look, the buildup has already begun for this week nine matchup that I'm going to go with. And so, okay, I'll take Packers at Chiefs for a thousand, please. I think when you look at this matchup, obviously, the, you know, the Mahomes to Aaron Rodgers, that aspect of it is going to be something we talk about ad nauseum. But when you just look at the pure talent ability and both of these guys, the, the, the way that they can manipulate the football, the, the different throws that they create, it's an art form. Look, they're, they're not passers. They're, they're, they're not throwers. They're, they're artists. They're like Bob Ross painting happy little trees here and there and, and you know, shading different parts of, of the field. I think when you look at 
at what they have done. Obviously, you know, both being Super Bowl MVPs, um, and two of them in the, in the last three years, they've been able to accelerate their teams. I think for Aaron Rodgers, last year, I think he was robbed of a chance to be in the Super Bowl. And look, his season and the Packers season was in jeopardy as soon as David Bakhtiari went down with that knee injury. If he does not go down, if Bakhtiari plays in the playoffs, I think it's, it's a different outcome for Aaron Rodgers and for the Packers. So uh, I think this is going to be a great matchup. Week nine is right in the middle of the season. It's going to be a great buildup, and I would not be shocked if we are starting our Super Bowl history over again. The very first Super Bowl ever was Chiefs-Packers. Mm. I can see it happening again. That's true. Oh. Some people would well. be shocked if it's Aaron Rodgers under center week nine against Yes, Mahomes and company, but that's a segment for another day. Uh, question for the room here. Are we overlooking this week four tilt between the Bucks and the Patriots? We use it as a peg for this conversation like it can't happen, like it wouldn't be the juiciest storyline in all of Super Bowl history. Are we kidding here? What we see week four there in Foxborough, you're telling me we all know the Bucks are the favorite out of the NFC. In the AFC, would it be that crazy for the Patriots to get there? Best coach, potentially, in Super Bowl history, or or NFL history, potentially. They have the most opt-outs returning. They were clearly the most aggressive, making the biggest splashes in free agency. I don't know. They're one season removed from having a historically dominant defense in 2019. To me, there's no reason they can't at least get back close to that level. And if they get Cam and the power run game clicking like they should... I just don't think it's a huge stretch to think New England can be dangerous this year at Shrags, and I don't know why we're not jonesing for this matchup. I also don't know why we're not talking more about the flow on the sidelines. Was that a mullet that I just saw? <laughs> Did you guys see Steve that? Steve Belichick. <laughs> that Steve was, Belichick. It's his little son. He's got the best hair in football. That was phenomenal. <laughs> I can't complain about yeah, judge yeah. hair by any stretch. I mean, look at the flow. Yep, that's, that's it. it. We need a tell of a tape on that. That's I like Gardner Minshew. Like that, huh? That's Gardner. Yeah. That's like an O2 Gardner Minshew right now. All right, nobody wants to throw in with me that the, the Patriots can be dangerous this year, and this could be hey. a Super Bowl Fifty Six. Who's the quarterback going to be? Is it going to be I, Cam I don't or get Mac? Out of the division. Look, I, look, to Kay's point, we're talking about who's quarterback, who's quarterback. And Jane, you can say hate it. Mac or Cam. Like, we don't, no, but like, I don't know who the quarterback of the Packers is. And and Sean, you know, as much as I want to say week nine, yeah. we're talking Super Bowl preview. Like, there's a really good chance it's Jordan Love. So if you're telling me to put my my name on something, I can't put my name on the Packers. It, it's the same way I can't put my name on the Patriots yet. But it's no crazier to say Patriots than Packers. Kay, I agree. I. It's pretty dismissive of us to just say, well, we know week four is not going to be a Super Bowl preview. Belichick isn't going to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, if Brady surprised us last year, why can't Bill do it this year? Well, I think she brings up the great point about the opt-out players because they were missing so many of those guys last year. For them to have brought all of that back and some of the depth that they've added, I'm not willing to say that the only reason the Patriots have won all the Super Bowls Tom Brady. I think last year, Bill Belichick was really working with what he had, and maybe there was some strategic planning there so that they could uniquely have this position uh, in the draft this year at 15 to go and get a guy like Mac Jones. So I'm not willing to write off Bill Belichick just because Tom Brady was able to get the most improbable thing done by this offseason and then also recruiting a bunch of his former teammates. So I don't think I don't think it's a I don't think You're it's here. a wild call.